So as long as salt remains salty, it co it continues to be to fulfill its purpose of being salt. That's the reason why it is salt. It continues to fulfill that purpose why it is salt. But as long as it, as it, it uh, loses its usefulness, it, 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 I mean it's useless. So once the server is removed, it is useless and will be thrown away and trodden upon by men. Now Jesus, according to this scripture, is likening us, you and I, to salt. Now your purpose of existence in the location where you find yourself to be, which is the United Kingdom, the purpose for which God has brought you for such a time like this, is to make a positive impact in your territory, in your community, in your neighborhood, in your place of work, in wherever you found yourself. Because the environment today, as you see it, is sour. It is sour. It has lost its savour. It has lost its taste. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. Now let us look at Acts of the Apostle chapter 17. Acts of the Apostle chapter 17. I want to read from verse 24. As of the Apostle chapter 17 from verse 24. From verse 24. God has made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heavens and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hand, as though he needed anything, seeing he give it to all life and breath and all things. Verse 26 says, And has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the faces of the earth, and has determined the times. He is the one who determined the time you were born and the location where you were born. Amen? Amen? He determined the time before appointed. He is the one who determined when your mother, your father met your mother, and that very night they lay together and gave birth. You were conceived with God's divine plan Amen. and positioned you in the place and the bounds of their habitation. He put you, he positioned you in the place where you are. Though you are black, to some of us, he brought us to this place by his divine order for a purpose. Amen. Verse 27 says that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us god is not far from 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 every one of us Amen. for in him we live we move Amen. and have our being as certain as of your own poets have said hallelujah Amen. for we also are his offsprings Amen. What is he saying? We learn that it is God who determines our best place. He is the one who determines where we are located. He is the one who determines where we should be. Now we are not in this place we are today by accident. Like as I often told us, some of us would have thought we came here for economic reasons. But God just used that one as a camouflage to bring you into this environment for a reason. Hallelujah. Amen. He determined the nation where you were born. He determined your geographical equation. Now, as thought, we have purposes to fulfill in where we are on this planet Earth that God specifically created us to compete in our lifetime, in the life that we live, that we have a space of time that we are supposed to live. In other words, the people you live with, your husband, your wife, 
your children, your neighbors to the right and to the left, the community where, we, where you live, the people you work with, when you leave your home, where you go to work, the people you relate with in your office, and the people you do business with. Hallelujah. Amen. The people you do business with, they are tired of Jesus loves you. Amen? Amen. People learn more from what they see than what they hear. Like as I was sharing with the workers this morning, you cannot tell the man who wrote English. You cannot teach the man who wrote English how to speak English. He is the one who wrote it. He is the originator of the language. That is the language he speaks. You cannot teach him how to speak the language he speaks. Hallelujah. They are tired of your preaching, but they want to see evidence of what you preach. We are specialists in preaching. This morning we are we preach with rhetoric. We are actors when it comes to talking. But they want to see the action. Somebody say action. Action, yes. action we know speaks more than words. Mm -hmm. Colossians chapter 4. Yes. Colossians chapter 4 verse 6. Colossians chapter 4. Verse 6. The Bible says, let your speech be always with what? Grace. With grace, garnished, seasoned with what? Salt. With salt, that ye may know how you ought to answer everyone, so that you will know how to relate with everyone, so that you will know how to pass this message by your actions the way you live so that they will know that truly this one is matching his actions with his words hallelujah Amen. he said let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer every man today what is happening is that we try to convince people that we are Christians we convince them don't you know that I'm a Christian? I go to church. Do you need to tell somebody that you go to church? They have to see it in your life. Amen. They have to see it in your life, your lifestyle. London people, we still need to tell you that the world has a parameter of how to dress. The fact that you are in London does not mean that you should dress anyhow. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I say praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We try to convince people that we are Christian, but they want to see it in your day-to-day -day life, your everyday life. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Your everyday life, your everyday life. Your everyday life, the way you live, the way you live, the way you relate, the way you talk, the way you do things. I was sharing with the workers this morning, the neighbors you live with, they know you more than you know yourself. You may not have met them, but when you are going in out of your house, they open the window a little while, they peep. You are not seeing them, but they are seeing you. True of us. True. I have a, do I have a witness in the house? Yeah. They know you. Yeah. So they know. The way you talk. Even some of us, the way we relate, the kind of things we do, they know. The fact that they have not spoken to us doesn't mean that they don't know. And you 
that behave the way you behave. You are going to knock at their door to tell them about Jesus. They don't want to be rude. They are polite. They will just tell you, thank you. I've heard you. But they are not taking what you are saying because they know you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, let's, let us see what happened in the lives of the disciples. Now we are in a postmodern era. Postmodern era. Where religion now is self, self. I before God. That is the postmodern era that we are. People worship themselves more than they will worship God. Now the disciples, they were doing their own thing. They were going about preaching the gospel, but they didn't, they didn't accept them. They didn't believe them. But something happened. Let us look at verse 13. Acts chapter 4 from verse 13. Now when they saw, what did they do? They saw. What did they do? They saw. It's not that they heard. They saw. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they did not talk about they were graduates, they were professionals. They specifically said here that they were unlearned men. They marveled because of the way they do things, they comported themselves, they related with people, they share love with people. Oh, they marveled and they took knowledge of them. You think people don't know you? They know you. You are known in hell. Your neighbors, they know you. In your place of work, they know you. If you touch somebody inappropriately, they may not react. They are surprised. Ah, but that guy said he's a Christian. Why is he touching me like this? Mm -hmm. They will smile, but they have, they have registered something in their hearts. Yes. 